The uh, journey to me being up here this morning started a few months ago. And the first time I didn't understand why I, you know, I didn't feel that God wanted me to share everything that I written at that time. So, you know, it, it's it still isn't easy for me, but you know, I, I think when God put something on your heart that um, we have to do. You know, there's no turning away. So we're going to start off very light on this right now. And when I ask a question, I just want to see a show of hands. Okay? And many of you have a show of hands. Just look around. Look around when you look at the house. So it's going to be very light right now. We like Starbucks. Who likes Tim Hortons? Um. <laughs> okay, you're allowed to look around and see where you sit in this. Who thinks that we have the best music of all the churches in Canada? I do. We're blessed. We're blessed. You know, I mean, really? Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's, our music team does so much for this church. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all about praise and worship God. So, you know, when, when I ask for, you know, uh, the raise of hands, and, and really God wanted me to, to tell you, look around the church to see who's raising hands. On Tuesday night when we were here for the AGM, that's what led me here. Well, God led me here. And, you know, we're, the church isn't dead. Okay. We're about $11,400 in, in the neighborhood. Okay. This is not something that just happened. This has been going on for a while. And it, it had prompted me to stand up about two months ago here. And Tuesday night, just it, it broke me. You know, it, if you look, it's, and I'm going to be reading a lot. And you know, God showed me that nowhere in the Bible, nowhere, does God give permission for a church to go into there. He just doesn't. He doesn't give us permission to do that. We are children of Israel. The children of God. As such, in the church, you will notice that you know, we'll stand up and we'll sing and we'll clap and praise and everything. But we don't give a thought to how it is that we're able to come here. We're only able to be here because of the money that it costs to be here. We don't hand out a collection plate like other churches. Nobody's here pounding away to say, give, 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 give. Well, I am. <laughs> but that doesn't count, because I'm here for what God wants me to write. But, you know, I, God had told Israel that he was going to lift them up, provide for them, and they would be lenders. They were never going to borrow. They were forbidden to borrow. They were lenders. And God prospered them. And you know, when we trust in God, we, you know, we can trust Him in everything our finances, our jobs, our family, everything in our life, we can do that. 
if we let him. And you know, it, it's, if, if you take a look in Deuteronomy 15, 6, and it says, For the Lord your God will bless you, as you promised you, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And you shall rule over many nations, but they shall not rule over you. And, you know, we, we have to think, whenever there's a shortfall for any given month, and this has been going on for a while, where does the money come from? Our bills still have to be paid. We have storage fees, we have rental fees, we have cleaning fees. There's, there's so much that, you know, that was shown on Tuesday. And you know, when a, when a church takes on debt, it becomes a slave to that debt. Okay? And then what God showed me there, it becomes a millstone around their necks. You know, giving to God is giving to the kingdom of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So when you tithe to this church, whether it be a love offering, a tithe, uh, you know, it, you're giving to God. If you're not giving to God, you're cheating God. You're not cheating us here. You're cheating God. And I sure don't want to be standing up there when I pass away and have to explain why I never gave to this kingdom. Okay? Everything takes money to operate here. When they need these things, I think it was $80 a piece. Yep, that's them. When they get broken, where does the money come from? It doesn't magically appear. You know, and what, what God showed me about, about money, you know, is just that you can't serve two masters. Amen. You either serve God or you serve money. Mm -hmm. If you try and serve two of them, you're going to end up serving one and only one. Mm -hmm. I choose God. You know, God says to walk by faith. Money says to walk by sight. God teaches us humility. Money teaches us pride. God tells us how to set our minds on things above. Money on things of earth. The temple. God tells us not to be anxious for anything. But you know what? Money and stress and anxiety go hand in hand. You're never satisfied. You never have enough. But if you trust God, He's more than enough. And, you know, it, it, there's just so much that God was, was, was showing me. And you know, God loves this church. He loves the worship team, you know, what they do. He loves our pastors. I mean, Really, I, you know, I've been to a lot of churches. We have such great people as pastors. Amen. And I want to give them a hand, too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of effort that goes into interviewing stuff like this. You just don't do it on the fly unless you're filled with the Spirit. And so often you watch Pastor Seattle, Pastor Alley, get up here. And it's unlike me, I gotta have notes. You know, and, you know, I mean, we got a great team here, great team. But, you know, God wants His church to flourish. He really does. He wants His church to do more, to be more. He, as he showed me, he says, how can we you know, flourish if we can't afford to? There's so much more that we could do if we can afford to. You know, Eric, we have to stop being a slave to this debt. 
Okay, and we just, we can't do it. We can't keep going on. And what God showed me was that, you know, the enemy has stronghold in many people in this church. And he showed me that, you know, we have to come together and pray about that to break these strongholds. We have to be there for people. You know, we're called to be disciples. And what he showed me was that there's so many that have no idea what disciples is, really. You know, it, it was really hard to. And so, our debt situation, God is asking us to address it. Okay? Sometimes God tells us what to do, sometimes He just, you know, asks, like any father. You know, can you clean your room? Can you, you know, wash your dishes? Can you do whatever? Your father can do that at home. Okay? But here, God is asking us. And I'm just wondering how many are really blinded by this in their lives. You know, I shared the first time I shared about Glenn Mattel. And he was born in the late 1800s. And I think he went to grade seven, if not. And he started many businesses, many of them. He came from a Christian family. And when he was in his 30s, and he was broke, he, he was broke, he had just hit bottom. And his sister told him, the problem is you're not making God part of your business. That's what the problem is. As soon as he made God, he controlled his business and his finances. He was giving to the church. He lived on 10 percent, and that's always been in our mind. Is that, you know, we need to be like them. You we don't need to give 90 percent. But what you do need to do is give everything up to God. And let God into your life soul, not just on Sunday, not just you know come here and feel good. Go home. You need to do this every day. You know, if you have a, have a problem, then give it up to God. And, and we don't, we don't, you know, many of us, I know many times I catch myself and I have to say, sorry, God. You know. And I'm gonna go back to that. Who's ever heard of the, uh, you know, Bill Cosby? Yes. Everybody heard of him. Yes. Everybody heard his skit called Noah. Oh, skit. Okay. And I'm going to, what God told me, he kept on putting it in my mind, and it, it, by the time I'm finished, I think I can draw the lines to it. He, God had, had spoken to Noah, and Noah was there doing whatever Noah did. And he says, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And so Noah looks over and he says, looking for his neighbor. Can't believe that God's speaking to him. So he goes, right, yeah, whatever. Well, God says, no, Noah, I want you to build me an ark. And so many cubits high, so many cubits long, and so many cubits wide. So Noah says, yeah, right. What's a cubit? Mm -hmm. So it goes on, and Noah's building this boat. It's hard. And he's struggling every day. There's always something going on that's going sideways for him. And how many people have that in their lives? Really? How many people can say that they live a perfect life where nothing ever happens that causes them stress? Mm. You see a show of hands. It's hands, people. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. Everybody has it. 
There are times that we fall away from God and we don't trust Him. Okay? So anyway, Noah's there. And now he's starting to load the animals and he's not happy. So he's grumbling away. And, uh, you know, he's talking to God and he's just saying, how do you expect me to tell whether a mosquito is female or male? How am I going to know what's made? And he said, have you seen that mess down there? Who's going to clean up that mess? So he's grumbling. And, and the skit, as you hear it, Bill Godley had some really good sound effects. And you can hear rain starting to lightly fall. And, you know, God had told God that he was going to flood the earth in 40 days and 40 nights. That's why he built the earth. No one didn't believe him. He's just building this hope. So he keeps on grumbling and grumbling. And suddenly the rain gets harder. And I was looking up and, hmm, okay, something's going on. And as the water starts coming up, Noah has a little bit of a epiphany. And he realizes that there's a reason why God had wanted him to do this. And all his grumbling was just putting him on the wrong side of God. So as this rain's coming on, you gotta remember this is a humorous skit that he's putting on. So he's finally his grumbling is just fading away. And he looks up and he says, it's you and me, Lord, right? You and me. We're in this together. And that's what we have to look at. We are all in this together. Amen. Amen. Okay. Our ark, in, in general terms, is what we do as a church building up the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Wow. Okay. And, you know, if, if we're grumbling and, and not doing what we should be doing, we're not going to go anywhere. That's right. And it, it becomes a point where, you know, like when Noah was grumbling and the rain was coming down, and what made him look up and just agree, hey, Lord, it's, you know, you and me, because Noah, the Lord just told Noah, Noah, how long can you drag water? And this is the point of bringing up Noah, is that how long can we tread water with this deck hanging over this church? The truth is, we can. It's been going on for months. Okay, going on for months. And, you know, when, when people raise their hands, you know, on the shoulder, yeah, we've got great music team, great pastors, you know, and everything. You know, we, we declare our faith in, in Christ. Right? It's easy to do. It's flat, you know? but easy to do. But here's what James 2.17 says. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Okay? And what the Lord told me with the works in the context of that verse, considering our church debt, is being faithful to give to the church. Okay? Because if we don't give, how do we continue doing what we do? Okay? So, again, you know, it, 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 it's just... When, when we have to answer how, you know, for our lives, what are we going to answer? You know, you can, you can be there and say, oh, Lord, and it's just as five an example. You know, they'll say, Lord, but I believe in you. Well, I'll tell you what. Satan believes in Jesus too. That's right. So, is that going to save us? No. 
And it says here quite clearly, we can have all the faith in Jesus that we want. But if we don't do what we should be doing by tithing, oh. it's dead. Our faith is dead. You can't, you know, it can be work hand in hand, okay? And the tithe means tenth. That's what it actually means. And in Deuteronomy 27, 30 to 32, it says, The tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Whoever would redeem any of their tithe must add a fifth of the value to it. Every tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. What it shows is that God will honor your, your tithing. But that's, that's part of our works. We're meant to tithe. And there's so many, like, you know, there's three reasons for a church not to go together. Being in debt denies a church the opportunity to see God's blessing. God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Death does not allow us the fullness of God's blessings. And that's in 2 Corinthians 9 8. The church of death restricts its ability to serve the Lord. The important ministry decisions that are made by our board and our pastor may be affected, and probably are affected, by the need to allocate money, you know, to maintain just where we are. So we're treading water. Okay. Now you realize that. Studies have consistently shown that most of the denominations go to death spend more on training water than they do on evangelism or mission work. Hmm. Okay. Matthew 28, 19 to 20 said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, Amen. baptizing them in the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, and, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have meant to man to do. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. And we're meant to be disciples. We're meant to do that. That's right. You know, downtown, whether it be downtown at the Art Gallery or down at, at uh, Surrey Central, that's what we're doing, discipleship. Amen. And you know what? We've had people come to the church. We've had people come give their heart to the Lord. We need to we need to continue. You know, That's right. a church with debt is a divided church. That's right. We are a divided church, and that we're not meant to be divided. Amen. We need to move forward in unity. Amen. Okay, and you know, I'm, I'm not trying to come down on anybody. This is what God has shown me. Uh, I'm not your judge because you know, God's the judge. I don't know who's giving and who's not. But in a divided church, you have people giving and you have people just taking. Just taking. They're not giving. To the church, you know, and if they're giving, it's certainly not considered what God is tithing. You know, now God also showed me that, you know, He said He understands that we have seniors on a fixed income, that we have students. We have those who are unemployed 
or only employed part time. And we live in the most expensive city in all of North America. That's right. That's what it is. This is we taught every city in North America for expense to live. But you know, there was a study that finished in 2013, and I don't think it's going to change much, revealed that only 10 to 25% of people in the church give to the church. Now, I think we're a little bit higher than that in this church. And I don't have the access to those figures. I don't want to know. It's not my job. You know, God tells me what my job is. So, if it's only 10 to 25% of the people, you know, they. The 90 to down to 75 percent, you know, they're missing out. They're really missing out. Because, you know, it's right down to the faith and works. They got to go hand in hand. Okay? Now, God told me that, you know, if the people in our church, whether they're new here, whether they're you know, been here for a while. If they don't give, then the first hurdle that they need to cross, the first stronghold that they need to break, is in their heart. Wow. Where's their heart? Wow. Where's their heart? Is. I'll tell you what. We're sitting here, and like I say, we can sing and dance and praise, and raise our hands. But where's our heart? Because we're not doing it from the heart. It's dead. It's, it's dead. Um, you know, God said that, you know, I put it in my mind. You know, are they in difficult financial situations or a time in their life? It's something as disciples that we should help to coach. Okay? Maybe they have issues in their life that doesn't really come out in, you know, a handshake or a hug. You know, and I guess that comes from getting to know people more. And I'm back for that. I walk in and, you know, I need to open up more. The other thing is that people know how to give. In this church, it's pretty evident when everyone's walking around with a cash machine and we have envelopes. So that wasn't really a thing, but I think it, it was more in the context of do people have the, the knowledge? They need the knowledge of how to give. And that's the tenth. And people need to know, you know, God showed me, he said, people in this church need to know, you know, what makes the ministry of our church possible. The AGM sure pointed that out to me and those over here. It's costly. It costs a lot of money. You know, and God showed me that there's people that are not genuine believers. You know, and, and I don't know where your heart is. You know, if, if you have I think we all have doubts in our minds sometimes. You know, just, you know, we, we come before God and instead of just thanking God for fixing our problem, we just lay it on. That's it. But we don't end our prayers with thanking Him. We're all ready to take care of it. Because He knows our need before we even voice it. Amen. He's just waiting for us to say it. Amen. Okay. And as soon as we say it, it's done. He's on it. Well, you know, I guess, you know, those that believe that, you know, that they have genuine faith, 
They think they are, but you know, the app lost because they are lost. Maybe the home life is a mess. You know, lots of that going, you know, happens. Maybe they're really never been discipled to. And never, you know, in here, not really that big of a problem here because we have people open to praying for you and talking to you and leading you all the time. All the time. You know, maybe many people have never been forced to face this issue. This is something you have to pray in your heart. You know, and maybe they've been hurt by a different church before. But well, we're not another church. We're this church. And we've been blessed. We've been blessed by God. For everything that our pastors do, our music team does, the people that volunteer, that come out and, and you know, do outreach. You know, but God showed me that he has... Uh, <laughs> No, God showed me that he is so much for this church. And it, it, you know, he said he has so many hearts to reach you. So many souls to save. You know, and he just showed me that our work for the kingdom is not even yet started. We're just basically at the tip of that iceberg. That's it. You know, but we need to be able to move ahead free of debt. You know, we, we've had a glimpse of what God does for us in this church. We stand up, we have people giving their lives to, to God, recommitting. We have people that get slain in the Spirit. You know, the Spirit of God moves on this church. Open up your heart. God loves his church so much. I don't know why God has placed this dirt on my spirit. He's taking this. But, you know, sometimes it, God uses, you know, people as, as, as a, a tool to get things done. Now, I've been called a tool many times, but not in a good way. But, you know, God has called me to tool, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn to use me. You know, I love everyone to see the love God has for them through this message. When I wrote this, I was in tears. It's what he put on my heart. I wish everybody could just see how much love he has for them. You know, I have so much heartache in my spirit, as well as the joy of learning the, the word today, and hopefully that it, it, it gets to people. You know, but please understand that God says you know, we have a duty to God to give what we can, to give what we can. Tithing is giving back to God what He gives so freely, so freely given to us. You know, I have children. I could never imagine giving one of my children as a sacrifice to save everyone. That's all right. You know, so remember that if we don't get freely, we're cheating God. Okay. Well, here's what I'm proposing. You know what I'm proposing? What God put in my mind. And I said, I'm just told to has to deliver this. We have a shortfall of approximately $11,390 out of the end of July. And you know, if you take a look at the debt ratio, the number of people that we have in here, this is what I'm trying to do is if the church ever wants to get along. You take a look at our total revenues divided by the number of adult 
uh, people that come to this church that attend constantly. Our debt ratio is so poor, we can never even buy an ice cream cone. That's how bad it is. It's terrible. That's a hit me when I looked at, at Tuesday. It was just running through my mind is, you know, like our, our debt ratio is really bad. Well, here's what God is proposing. I thought originally that we just get an extra 25% on our time. Just an extra 25%. But God showed me something. 25% would get us out of debt on the average, based over two months of giving. Okay? And get us pretty much out of debt. God told me no. God wants 30%. And I'm going to do that. And the reason why it was 30% is God wants this church to prosper. We have to be on the positive side of things. Where we aren't burdened by the need to, where's the money going to come from this month? What are we going to pay this month? Where's the pastor going to have to do this month? So, you know, I. I looked at the numbers on, on Tuesday and I used to do accounting in the camp for Forum Street. And I could figure out pretty quickly that there's months that we come ahead, months that we go behind. And the goal behind was actually a little bit more than that. So I'd like to see that everybody, for two months, give an extra 30%. Maybe drop some of the Starbucks coffees or the Timmy's or whatever. You know, brew your coffee at home. Give the money to God. And, you know, the 10% is, you know, over was just something that came to my mind and you know you have to search your own heart for all this like I say there's people I can't afford to God doesn't expect that but if you give what you can and pray to God to better your circumstances God will be faithful but you have to step up and be faithful first so I'm going to just finish off here. You know, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. That's 2 Corinthians and Hebrews. A church with no debt is an influential witness to the community that God provide for his people. And it is blessed to serve others instead of serving them. And then, but please search your hearts, give what you can back to the one who gave us his all, Amen. who gave so freely to those who deserve only death and torment. Now, I'll leave you with a verse from Romans 13 18, and it says, Let no death remain outstanding except the continuing death to love one another. So please, you know, you know, the second time up here, you know, if God directs me, I'll be back. We need to get rid of this man, okay? Let's get rid of this millstone. Let's break the stranglehold that the enemy has on this church in this day. Okay? God bless everybody. Love you. Amen.